Hey guys, we are here in Rouen, France. Pardon my French movement, but it's not the right pronunciation. Behind me is the cathedral or basilica dedicated to Joan of Arc. It's gonna go, we're gonna go explore it. The Church of Saint Joan of Arc, or Église Saint Jean d'Arc, is a Catholic church in the city of Rouen in northern France. Built next to the site where Joan was martyred, this modern church has a dual purpose. First as a church honoring her and second as a civil memorial to the French heroine. But let us do a quick backstory of Joan d'Arc's final days in Rouen before learning about the church. To know more about her whole life story, check out the description below for the links. In the spring of 1430, the king ordered Joan to attack Compagnie. She fell from her horse and was taken captive by the Burgundians. After a year in captivity and under the threat of death, she relented and signed a confession denying that she had ever received divine guidance and she was acquitted of heresy. At the time, public heresy was a capital crime in which an unrepentant or relapsed heretic could be given over to the judgment of the secular courts and punished by death. Having signed the abjuration statement, Joan could not be put to death as an unrepentant heretic, but she could be put to death if she was convicted of a relapse, returning to the same heresy she abjured. As part of her abjuration, she was required to renounce wearing men's clothes. She exchanged her clothes for a woman's dress and allowed her head to be shaved. After Joan signed the abjuration, the English did not let her out of their custody. And instead, she was returned to an English prison and remained chained to her cell. Witnesses at the rehabilitation trial stated that Joan was subjected to mistreatment and rape attempts, including one by an English noble. They also stated that guards placed men's clothes in her cell, forcing her to wear them. Bishop Cusho was notified that Joan had resumed wearing male clothing. He sent clerics to admonish her to remain in submission. But the English prevented them from visiting her. On May 28, Cusho personally went to Joan's cell along with a number of other clerics. According to the trial record, Joan said that she had gone back to a soldier's outfit because it was more fitting than dressed like a man while being held with male guards, and the judges had broken their promise to let her go to Mass and to release her from her chains. She stated that if they fulfilled their promises and place her in a decent prison, she will be obedient. When Kusho asked about her visions, Joan stated that they had blamed her for abjuring out of fear, but she will not deny them again. As Joan's abjuration had required her to deny her voices, this was sufficient to convict her of relapsing into heresy and to condemn her to death. The next day, 42 assessors were summoned to decide Joan's fate. Two recommended that she had to be abandoned to the secular courts immediately. The remaining recommended that the abjuration be read to her again and explained, but all voted anonymously that Joan was a relapsed heretic and she was to be abandoned to the secular power, the English, for punishment. On May 30, 1431, Joan was sentenced to be executed at the age of 19. In the morning, she was allowed to receive the sacraments despite having been excommunicated. Afterwards, she was directly taken to Rouen's View Marsh, or Old Marketplace, where she was publicly read her sentence of condemnation. At this point, she should have been turned over to the appropriate authority, the bailiff of Rouen, for secular sentencing, but she was not. Instead, she was delivered directly to the English and tied to a tall plastered pillar for execution by burning. She requested to view a cross as she died. She was given one fashion from a stick by an English soldier, which she kissed and placed next to her chest. A processional crucifix was fetched from the church St. Xavier, 
she embraced it before her hands were bound. And Friar Isambard de la Pierre held it before her eyes during her execution. After she died, the English raked back the coals to expose her charred body so that no one could claim she had escaped alive. Her remains were cast into the Seine River. Twenty years later, a new trial ordered by Charles VII cleared her name and she eventually became a saint. Now let us talk about the church dedicated to her. The church and adjacent market halls were designed by architect Louis Aretsch, who was commissioned in 1969. The project was controversial because of its design. The city houses many beautiful medieval Gothic churches and the strange-looking memorial church stand out with the surrounding picturesque Norman half-timbered houses. Nevertheless, it was inaugurated on May 27, 1979 by French President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing. It was listed as a historic monument in 2002. Some people see in the shape of the church an overturned longship or the flames on which the saint was burned. The church is surmounted by a trapezoidal slate roof which is elongated to form a walkway across the square. The scaly tiling of the roof matches the fish-shaped windows. Next to the church stands a small market hall, evoking the ancient tradition of trade occurring in the square as long as Joan the Ark's time. The square was the site of the church San Sevior, which was dismantled in 1793 during the French Revolution. Its foundations were cleared during the recent renovation of the square. A small commemorative plaque and a 20-meter high cross mark the spot on which Joan of Arc was burned alive for heresy in 1431. The market hall simultaneously resembled smaller overturned boats and fish with gaping mouths which are also rich Christian symbols. Inside 13 stained glass windows from the 1520 to 1530 form a glass wall of 500 square meters baiting the interior in exceptional light. These fine windows were originally set in the choir of the St. Vincent Church which was destroyed during World War II. However, precautions had been taken and the windows were put in a safe keeping until they were incorporated into the new home some 40 years later. The 13 panels illustrates Christ's childhood, passion, crucifixion, and resurrection, and life events of St. Peter, St. Anne, and St. Anthony of Padua. Here is the list of the 13 window panels. Lastly, France officially commemorates Jean d'Arc on the second Sunday in May. In Rouen, a festival is held for her on a Sunday, around May 30th. So that's it for the history of the Church of St. Joan d'Arc. Until next time, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Bye! So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to comment. Hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, come on guys, hit the bell! For notifications. And don't forget to...
the sheriff! And law 